Elden Ring is a call to crusade, a masterpiece where God orders you to kill heretics, slay eldritch monsters and get lost in the vast open world written by George R. R. Martin. You play as a servant of the greater will, a higher deity tasking you to crusade to the holy land, gather the broken shards of the Elden Ring and become its new lord. All spread out through the map and at the hands of crazy demigods, your job is to slaughter through their minions, clear the labyrinths they call home and learn to love the feeling of your head against the wall. Meeting wonderful people along the way, the ranged lunatics and all the quests and paths that lead to the masochistic experience ahead. So strap in, open your bibles and let's start with the basics. Gameplay To the unsoulsborn, you can attack, defend and cast spells, with jumping and sneaking now included. Blocking time and you counter attack, sneak behind and backstab. Learn when to roll and you're golden. Magic is no meme, it's powerful, downright broken and comes in two flavors. Staff wielding spells leveled by intelligence or incantations leveled by faith. Smite God's enemies with your hatred for them incarnate. Getting out of the tutorial, you're greeted by the first of such. A blood lord worshipper that mocks you for not having a woman. Besides him is a side of grace where God both revives and guides you. If the soft array of light vaguely pointing somewhere isn't enough for your tarnished brain, then you're playing the wrong game. In Elden Ring, there's no directions, not even journals. Much like scripture, you must interpret vague passages of text for answers. Succeed and you get to the right place. Fail and you get lost. Killed and and start wondering why everything's burning. There are roaming bosses everywhere, avoidable enemies that guard an area. Get you close and you'll be dead as soon as the boss music hits. FromSoft doesn't do level scaling. To kill them, you gotta slay their goons, collect runes and meet Melina, who'll teach you how to level up if you let her follow you around. Each stat increases a given skill. Where to allocate them is one of the main struggles, for the faithless. Melina will also give you a whistle that summons a magic war goat. It's on demand, useful and loyal. Once killed, his revival with health potions, the ones you drink yourself every time you bite more than you can purge. Magic potions also exist, both upgradable. Here, the weapon makes the man. What you wield in battle is what decides how bloody the wall gets. Weapons can deal multiple forms of damage, each with a unique power. The scythe deals holy damage scaled to your faith, having the ability to wreck enemies guard, completely spammable and effective. Not even mentioning all the ashes of war and talismans. The sword of night and flame is something else. Once you've met the requirements, it deals three types of damage damage and casts two broken endgame spells. How well each weapon scales to your stats is displayed in letters. If you can't read, just throw enough somber stones at it so you can do this. The world is massive and filled with surprises. Landscapes are more vertical than the difficulty curve and parkour skills aren't optional. Be it multiple portal gates or the odd elevator you found in the woods, you'll find yourself thinking you're just exploring a shitty cave, finding yourself in an underground city filled with overleveled atrocities spanning the whole map. Like real life, everywhere you go people want to kill you or sell you something. If it's not monsters or the odd nomadic merchant, you'll find people asking for aid, making you go through the most forsaken areas of the map, slaughter hundreds of atrocities and and their elder leader for questionable recompense. Sometimes you'll be blocked from an area, sealed by a puzzle with no hints. The average runt would go online, watching tutorials on how to solve their every problem. But you, you run over the entire area, read every line, item description and load screen twice before falling to the disgrace of relying on anyone but God. Boss fights are at the center of Elder Ring's design. These range from dudes in armor to Lovecraftian titans. You either have to be cautious, predicting which of their many appendages will attack you next, or boss the wall, hugging their ass so tight they call 911. These fights aren't easy. Some will torment you for so many hours, spamming and insta killing you in so many ways that by try 78 you have nothing left but pure rage. And that's when you win. Nothing beats the orgasmic cathartic high you get by posing at their corpse. Depending on the boss, they might say something as they die, have elaborate introductions filled with characterization and intriguing information. To understand them, this world and all those you meet, including yourself, we must venture for the nightmare creature of vague uncertain truths that is Elden Ring's lore. Story Long ago, the world was even more infested with heretical cults. Then one day, the Greater Will sent a giant alien to fuse with a woman and form the Elden Ring, a transcendental artifact of order, planting a giant tree that blessed people. Its every command relayed by a set of two hairy fingers. That woman, Merica, married Godfrey, making him the first Elden Lord, who led a bloody crusade to purge all heresy in the land, involving a war 
War of Giants and Moon Worshipping Hogwarts, led by Queen Renala. To beat them, Merica split off a male half, Radagon, who hooked up with Renala and was cursed by the giants to be a ginger. Not needing Godfrey anymore, Merica divorced and sucked his soul, making him and his soldiers the first tarnished, banished beyond the fog. She had four demigod sons with him, plus two more with Radagon, who abandoned Renala with their three children to masturbate. Merica didn't like death, so she tore the rune of death from the Elden Ring, giving it to her furry half-brother, making all immortal. Among the demigods was Rani, one of three Empyreans, those born from a single god. Why is Rani an Empyrean when their parents were distinct? In a game written by George and FromSoft, there are no answers, only theories. Rebellious, Rani was indoctrinated by a witch to hate god, stealing the rune of death, killing best boy and destroying her body to unbind it from god. Her soul now inhabiting a doll cursed with a gravitational spell that attracts simps. The death of her only normal son drove Marika mad, shattering the Elden Ring and getting stuck in the tree with Radagon as punishment. Thus began the Shattering, where demigods battled each other for shards of the Elden Ring, hoping to mend it and succeed Radagon. It ended in stalemate, so God reblessed some tarnish to get the job done. This is why we purge. Experience. Now that you know the basics, it's time to share the divine comedy that's actually playing. The starting area, Limgrave, is already brimming with content. Plenty of enemies to beat and characters who captivate the soul. Among them Patches, an interdimensional scheming bastard that haunts you through the entirety of the Soulsborne games. Except the worst one. There's friendly creatures to be enjoyed, like jellyfish and turtles, or as scientists call them, turtle friends. One of them so chill he was ordained as a bishop, their leftover corpses freely usable as shields, protecting you from heresy even in death. All of your deaths are canonical, once killed you lose all of your shackles and gotta retrieve them, and there's no save files. If you regret a decision or miss content, you have to start all over, except respects. It's a breathing world, armies of rival demigods battle away, elevators you use have to be pulled back, and people you meet along the way travel just as you do, always to their detriment. The soundtrack is marvelous, from the ambient songs to the Mozart tier orchestras that kick in every time you fight a boss. The sound design peak satisfaction. Slaughtering your way to Stormvale Castle, you're stopped by Margaret the Fell. Do you know how a pleb filter works? It raises its weapon, holds it, does a fake out, and then strikes. Elden Ring is roll bait galore. Truth is, Margaret was born among cursed twins, being imprisoned for being horny, taking it out on pleb players. Patches even sells his old shackles. Feel free to abuse or run past the castle. Past him, you're guided by a chap that hates his boss, nearby whom you find mutilated, limbless bodies in every corner. The work of Godric, the grafted. Born the weakest of his siblings, he held a grudge, hunting tarnished warriors to self-attach their limbs for strength. Kill him, and the chap will kick his corpse for the entire game. Godric had a thing for dragons, can't say why. Fight one dragon, fought them all. No wonder their devil abandoned them. Down in the corner, you can access the round table hold, a hub area where tarnished guided by god wait for you to lead to their deaths. Once a fellow brother, they'll teach you incantations, another an all-knowing nonce, and one the Dung Eater, a criminal tarnished the larps as an omen and defies Defiles corpses to curse them. How he defiles is unknown. Among them you'll meet Fia, the deathbed companion. On the surface of her chest you'll find warmth, but within lies heresy. Seeking to revive Godwin as the lord of death, she rejects God's order, promoting life beyond death, that which every damn ghost is cursed with. Not to be confused with the specter of players sharing their wisdom on the ground. Go through her entire convoluted quest for an even tighter hug. It's Halal, a crusader kills her. Past Stormvale you get to Leurnia, an area overflowing with swamps and disgusting creatures. It's here where you can barge into Hogwarts, D day through it, kill the students, and get to Renala. Ever met a girl that just wouldn't get over him? Imagine giving her a doomsday laser. Beating Renala isn't so simple, not because it's hard, but because FromSoft can't get hard without forcing players to run miles past enemy lines after every death. Stakes of America, not for D. Enemy variety boggles the mind. You fight everything from humanoids, plants, to every form of demon Japan can rip from mythology. By far the worst are dogs. Get surrounded by a pack and you're dead. Northeast lies Kaelid, with even bigger dogs and ruined by the battle between two demigods. Malenia, an Empyrean cursed with rot, and Radan, a fanboy of two Elden Lords who copied their 
drip and learned gravity magic so his horse could carry him. While fighting, Malenia released her rod, driving Radan mad and turning the land into an apocalyptic painting, with Radan dedicating his last neurons to lock the stars into place, cause not even lobotomized he would give up the joy of triggering moon worshippers, even organizing a recurring festival where warriors band together to kill him as his preferred method of suicide. His fight is glorious, taking an entire gang and loads of cheese to bring him down. Just as apocalyptic as Kaelid are the volcanic lands, ruled by his brother Rikard, who committed the worst crime of all. No, not heresy. He's even worse than a heretic. When the Tarnished were banished by divine decree, Rikard dared question God's decision, calling him cruel and arbitrary. Shunned by his faithful siblings, him and his blasphemous followers were crusaded multiple times. To fight them, he let a giant serpent devour his body, eating people to absorb their strength and devour his brethren, forming the volcano manor and crossbreeding humans with snakes. I joined his faction just so I could purge him. So hated this blasphemer was, his own veteran made a sword specifically for killing him. When I told everyone I killed their god, they were chill, thanking me for showing how weak he was. When I got back to spit where he died, the bitch was eating his regenerating corpse. If you're too disgusted to fight such depths of depravity, use the Mimic tier, an Ash summon that copies your build and both tanks and attacks enemies for you. It's so OP that even nerfed, you can summon it, sit around and watch it kill minions and bosses alike as you think of all of the ways Rani's followers will burn in hell. Living nearby her alleged mother, Rani plots to collect fingers laying weapons and use her tier 3 simps to cast God aside and rule over an eternal night. Her entire quest line is a test of faith. It's filled with well written, likable characters that keep making you ask funny questions. Is God truly good if there's so much suffering? Do you not want a cute anime girl ruling the world? Should you really worship an alien entity that disgraced her very kind and massacres all that disobey it? Yes. Her dark god of the moon is only one of many devils. Go the wrong way in Liurnia and you'll be stricken from your horse, afflicted with the maddening heresy of the frenzied flame. Seeking to destroy creation, it fills the mind of its victims with communist propaganda, making them wish to burn all that divides and distinguishes. Corrupting souls and entire villages with eye-melting hatred for all life, it plots to have you inherit the frenzied flame from the abhorrent tree fingers and become the lord of chaos to destroy the world. Its followers are always either demons or victims. Ever attacked a merchant? They reply with frenzied spells. Long ago they were accused of heresy by a frenzied demon, so God banished them underground, making them lament with such agony they summon the devil, which now haunts them. But even to the most depraved violent players, their salvation. The third and last of the Imperians is Malenia's twin, Mikola. Like his sister, he was cursed with a crippling affliction. He was Malenia's male twin. While making him attractive and beloved by all, it also made him a target for the biggest homo around, Moog. Margaret's twin, he also broke free and kidnapped Mikola to worship him as his twink god, led to the sinful path by a demonic formless mother with a curse kink. Saddened by his sister rotting away, Mikola had renounced god, planting his own earth tree and making a staff that casts away the heresy from outer gods, use it to cleanse the antinatalist filth that's taken over you. As for the heretic Moog, he was so scared by my crusader physique he couldn't move, so I kicked him to death. This was the blood lord that Mask Hunt worshipped, the same one that teaches you how to invade other players, appearing as a red tainted specter barging in someone else's game to ruin their day, or get vibe checked. Elden Ring's endgame depends on which path you followed. If you were faithful, you have become a divine paladin, zapping and healing through any fight, scaring plebs with your mere presence. Should you have chosen paths of heresy, you have attained skills and weapons so broken and apelonas you'll be lost to what even is the meaning of playing anymore. The answer is exploring. FromSoft follows the enlightened philosophy of I'm gonna make huge detailed areas for the game and make them an active pain to reach. You never know which untraveled road or dank cave may lead to an unseen area area with secret enemies. Nocron and Oxtella alone, once banished underground by the greater will for being filthy moon worshippers, are home to more bosses than Disney HQ. Other areas get more complicated. Malania, for example, requires two long quests to find the halves of the lost medallion that opens the secret elevator to the puzzle pre-area to the real tree area to get through the thousands of enemies stationed in front of her first mini-boss. If you think you beat her easily, you got more faith than me. Her weapon heals damage, and she attacks like this. 
crusading through the capital, you fight Margit again, now Morgoth, cause half the characters in this game have an alter ego. And for all that, you'll be spurned by the tree from passing. What did God mean by this? Confronting the high priestess, you'll find the fingers won't receive an explanation until Winds comes out. So you conclude the obvious. God is a heretic. Merica, still bitter, sullied the golden trinity, wishing for an end that should not be. Gideon glimpsed at it and it drove him so mad he thought he had a chance against my cheese. With God's vessel compromised, I fell to the church fathers. The brilliant golden mask is a blast tarnish who has achieved such knowledge of the greater will he can communicate PhD level theology with one finger. He's got an entire quest with brother Corho in which he discovers an imperfection in the golden order. America, sacrificing himself to write an update for the faith. You can beat the last fire giant and Melana will use the fire their dead god made to burn open the earth tree. The land will be covered in cinders and the round table will burn. Almost no one left to care, cause you did their quests. Breaking into America's prison, she transforms herself into himself and you, against this all-powerful deity, knight and flame him down with your shadow clone. Not even God's vassal can deal with the mimic cheese. With their deaths, everything is not possible. You can prolong the outdated faith, restore death, curse everyone, or burn it all down. Worse, hand the universe to your waifu. Alas, I imposed my religious interpretation by force and ruled over all as their immortal pope. Marvelous game. Play it now. In fact, play all Soulsborne games. Cause like them, all that will be left in time is waiting for DLCs, watching lore videos, and playing against the increasingly fanatical player base as we mean. God knows, we wouldn't have it any other way. This sermon was shielded by the Finger Maidens, pure women pledging their hearts and souls for the greater will. Join up and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and God bless.